We laugh. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome into another Mighty Recap. My name is Marcel Almighty, and today we're going to do a quick recap of the stocks I traded and how I managed to make over a thousand dollars here day trading stocks in the small cap market. Um, is there, if anybody is new here, I'm a full time day trader. I am a momentum scalper, and I focus primarily in the in the uh, penny stock slash small cap stocks. Today, we, had, you fi we finally had a little bit of momentum. We finally had a stock that literally went to the moon, which, um, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my moon costume today. Um, AERC, the big, the big one of the day, man. This stock went over 200% intraday. Just imagine it's stock going over 200% intraday. Just for you to, to have a, an idea, the S&P 500, in average goes around eight percent a year and this thing went 200 and something percent intraday in one day isn't that crazy this is what we like to see and this is the momentum we want to see for forever um hopefully this is a good sign for the for the couple of days to come but um yeah we're gonna do a little bit of the of a recap here today before we continue quick disclaimer please pause the video and go through this um you know, I just want to say that my results are not typical. My results are not the typical results of the average trader. Please be cautious. Um, please don't follow anyone and be and learn how to make your own decisions. You have to be very smart with your money. Um, all right. Without further ado, let's get into it. As you can see, a pretty nice green day here today. Over a thousand dollars, a thousand and a thousand dollars and one hundred twenty-four. And I must say, I feel like I could have done a little bit better today. Obviously, I'm not complaining. A day over a thousand dollars is definitely leaving the dream. A day over any amount. If you're green on the market, you're absolutely leaving the dream. But for me today, it feels I have a kind of like a mixed feeling because at the beginning of the day, I had a very choppy day, as I'm going to show you here in my trader view. I had a very choppy day. So I started off the day strong on G on J A N on John. And then, you know, I just gave my entire day back. You know, I, I got a little stubborn. I got a little emotional. I bought some dips in which they didn't work immediately. I sold them for a loser. Then the stock rips all, all the way to high of day. I get foam, I get emotional, and then I chase entries. And just like that, I did my gate back. Okay, I was able to, to maintain composure down here. And then I rallied all the way back up to 200, to 250 or something like that. And then I gave half of that back. And then at that point, we went to see a lot of opportunities. I caught myself forcing trades. And to be honest, it just looked like an absolute disaster of a day. It didn't look hot at all. Um, it looked like we were going to have another slow day. So I said, you know, I said, I said, I said to myself this, Marcelo, you are feeling emotional right now. And you know it. The only reason you're here, you're forcing trades just because you're not happy with your PNL. Recognize that you're feeling emotional. Recognize that this is a slow day. This is a slow choppy day. Yesterday was cat catastrophic of a day. But let's just walk away. Let's just walk away. We've been trading every day. You know the entire open of the market like the entire the entire day almost every day for the last couple of weeks let's just take off right now be grateful that we are green and let's walk away and of course the day i walk away you know we get some crazy momentum here um you know i i, I came i came here power hour and i just like was able to rally up, up a thousand bucks in less than an hour which is kind of crazy i was not expecting that at all um but in any case, I just, I left, right? And I left with my hundred bucks and I was like, you know what, let's take it. Let's just go to the gym. I usually go to the gym after the market closes anyway. So I kind of wanted to follow my routine. In my mind, I was on trading, so I went to the gym. And then I get a message from Steve, the moderator. And he's like, yo, Marcelo, where are you at? E A E R C is absolutely mooning. And he sometimes joked around with that stuff. And I'm like, nah, yeah, you're kidding, right? And then like, yeah, right, it's mooning, sure. And then he was like, bro, I'm serious this time. He, and he sent me a picture of this chart absolutely going nuts. From a low of $3, $3.90 all the way up to, I don't know, 15 I think it was. It was 15 yeah. And I was, and I was like, there's no way. You have to be kidding me. But, you know, because I walked away under my own decision, I didn't feel that bad because... You know, regardless of this, I was happy with my little green. So I was like, you know, if this is good for momentum, I'm glad Steve was green. He told me that our tree was green. So, you know, that was enough happiness for me. Okay, my 
my fellow traders are green this is good for momentum overall this is good good for my strategy anyway let's not have FOMO about this day and and let's just move on so you know whatever I just continue with on with the day I guess this thing continued to rip and I and I just didn't even want to see my my think or swim you know app because I wouldn't be able to see the charts so you know whatever then I came back and then I sat here down power hour I, I wasn't expecting anything power hour to be honest I just wanted to see the madness that that took place but when I sat down we were I sat down around here around this 15 mark and you know I saw that this crazy move happened but then look at this this thing started to creep up and as volume started to creep creep in throughout this move I was able to get myself green 300 300 dollars and I wasn't trading with 1500 shares no way this was the wild west of stocks ripping massive volume huge spreads I was trading these with 500 shares so so you know I, I wanted to take it easy I didn't want to go red after being on, on such a roller coaster of a day so I'm like okay let's take it easy on this so you know so I was able to capitalize there that was that another one that was holding up that also went not HUSA so again I came back around 15 here and we were just doing what we were just consolidating very near high, near high of day I was like okay I don't know the strength of this stock I don't know how choppy it's going to be. I don't know how my how my um, mental capital on the day is going to be affected. I just want to make sure this is a strong stock. So I'm going to I'm going to let it get very close to half day. I took this breakout here for the break of this very obvious pivot. I took this breakout. I took this pullback right here and I took the breakout of high day. So, you know, some nice trades. I got I got bigger on the green. Then I took the break of high day again and me and our team were getting aggressive on this thing. We were just buying high of day after high of day after high of day after high of day. And you know, that's just like the aggressive style you need to have if you want to be a scalper, an aggressive scalper. It breaks high of day. Some people see it as a, you know, this is the highest you can buy on this stock. This is the riskiest to go long. But as a long buyer trader, I'm like, this is squeeze time. I smelled, we smelled the blood in the water. And it's like, yep, it's time to push. High of day break, high of day break, high of day break, high of day break. We continue to get scalps, continue to get scalps. So, you know, I did that. This one I was trading with 2,000 shares, I think. Yeah, 2,000 shares. I started with 1,000, and then after getting green on these two trades, I went up to 2,000 on this move. You know, another nice winners. And I'm like, damn, I'm off 500 bucks. Okay, I'm, I'm going to walk away. And then I kind of like stood up, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> there's no way, there's momentum here. Like, there's no reason for me to walk away. And if I'm red, I'm red. But if my strategy is here, I want to I wanna make myself available to either, you know, Take my profits or pay my expenses. Whatever it is, if I'm trading my strategy and if, if I'm trading a quality setups, I shouldn't just walk away of momentum. I'm like, okay, whatever. But this is gonna be painful if I go under 500. Man, just trade your strategy. Shut up. Okay, I'm fine, fine, fine. And then EFOI. No, 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 not this one. EU, AUVI. AUVI. It starts opening up too. It starts going crazy. Like, oh, well, here we go. Again, break of five day. Pull back. Pull back. Jeez, another two hundred dollars. And then what else did I trade it? Let's see. Um, maybe that's that's where all the profits came. No, I traded Siga. Siga was the one I was trading at the market open. Is the one that brought me back to flat. Um. Yeah, I think that's it. But in any case, some big opportunities here. Power hour, Jesus Christ. What the hell happened here? You know, some big opportunities, power hour. And, um, you know, I've been complaining about power hour so much. It's so hit or miss. But once you connect one power hour, I, I guess it's worth it. I don't know. I guess the the best way to approach power hour is just to come and sit down and expect to not take any trades. You just sit down to hang out in the on the chat room. Just sit down to, you know, take make, you know, make takes make some other work on the, on a side monitor and then you set the charts up if something rips well something rips you take advantage of it if nothing rips then you're not sad about it because you're doing some other work regardless Th that's going to be the new approach i'm going to take for for um trading power hour um so yeah man crazy trades crazy power hour of momentum you know again could i could i been bigger green if i would have stayed the entire day you know 
although a lot of people in the chat room were like, bro, if you would have stayed, you would have killed it today. You know, I, 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 I am happy with the compliments, but the reality is if I would have continued to trade with this mentality I had here with the FOMO, with the frustration, with the anger, this easily could have, could have been a day that I take one by one bad trade while the stock is ripping. I get pissed off. I was getting, I was so pissed during this move, man. I was like, I was getting crappy feels. I was like, I was just mad. So let's say the stock starts ripping. I buy a higher day because I'm aggressive. I am emotionally hijacked. I think this is a higher day breakout setup. In reality, it's just an extension that's extended about a reverse. I buy massive loser. Then I get pissed off. I lose all my green. And then, you know, I double down on a even crappier setup and I go to max loss. So if you're emotional, it doesn't matter how hot the market could be. You need to walk away. So I did. Or on the other hand, I could have, you know, killed it today. Who knows? But the reality is that you have to be on your A game, you know, every single minute of the day. And I just wasn't. So, you know, this kind of a break was nice because I came in hot after the gym. Everything I was thinking was all the mistakes I, I made during, during the first couple of hours of the open. So after the gym, I know I had a game plan already for tomorrow. But it looked like it looked like we had another trading session today. So I just implemented and implemented everything I learned from this choppy, um, this choppy open, and then I was just able to connect and get green, which is crazy, man. Um, yeah. So um, I don't have um, I don't have a um, live trades because most of my trades have been power hour but what we can do is to dial in dial in the ch the stocks that moved up power hour and see if we can get a continuation move for tomorrow so this thing if it holds holds up is definitely going to be here for continuation let's see okay so I don't know why I have two blue lines because there's no way we have two, two 200 SMA. So this is, should be gone. I'm going to mark the high of this candle. It's going to be an important pivot for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to delete this, 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 this. These are just some intraday, intraday levels that I had for some reason. I I always delete them because they bother me whenever I come back to the daily. I just want to have a clean daily, mark up the, the obvious pivots. Okay, so it looks like tomorrow, if we hold up, it looks like this zone is going to be critical to hold up. We're going to have to hold up the 200 SMA and also the high of this previous very obvious pivot. And if we do, we have a very clear window of two dollars all the way to 463 and then above that we have a window all the way to 612 so you know if this stock can hold up definitely looking good for tomorrow so efoi definitely continuation let's see this a uvi i think this one might be in play too yep we're going to mark the high of the previous candle high and then we're going to delete everything behind it um okay daily chart the 200 is going to be a little bit close here for tomorrow so we got to be aware of that 200 then we have some resistance here which is not as valid anymore so i'm going to mark out this high let's see if this high had any importance here today this is an example of how important the daily chart is Yep, there it is. Resistance underneath it came back down, retested it, and as we held, we continue to go up. So you know, definitely um, an obvious little high right there. Not as obvious, but um, yeah, this high very obvious. Gap fill. Uh, we usually mark these, but then because we already closed the gap on this little move here, I feel like the gap is overdone. And then I continue to mark up the highs and the highs and the highs. 
and yeah so that's looking good enough for now and something else we want to mark out is the high of the pre-market well it's not pre-market but probably tomorrow this is going to be the high for pre-market tomorrow and we want to see where the hell is that on the daily so it's around here so it's not looking great because we have just a couple of cents until we get to, to the 200 SMA. Um, but if we can break to the 200, there's still not room. The, the clear window only comes once we break 375. And once we break 375, that's a nice window all the way to the upside. You know, there's people that solely trade off of the, off of the daily. They take trades just off of the daily. If they see the candle break into a daily pivot and if they and then they go back and look at a five minute chart let's say and then as they see that there's some sort of some sort of well i guess doesn't there isn't any clear examples here but as they see that there's some sort of consolidation finally holding a holding above a daily level of resistance that now becomes support they just try to hold all the way to the next target which would be the 200 here so let's see if this daily pivot is going to hold up and let's see if we can if we if we can see a touch of the 200 given that we already have a lot of strong names holding up maybe this one won't be as obvious but i'm definitely going to keep an eye on that indo uh aerc definitely in play so let's get dialed in dialed, dialed in on this stock All right, high of day there. And then look at this high, almost to the penny. Let's take a look at this. This is obviously a daily resistance here. Again, the importance of the daily. Let's see where that level came from. The level came from the high of this candle wick right here. And as you can see, we topped out on that level. So for tomorrow, we're going to try and see if we can hold this zone. And if we can hold this zone, Clear through 1530, we have a nice window all the way to 1819. Then if we break 1819, man, if we break 1819, this thing has the potential to go absolutely nuts. I'm not saying it's going to go to 100, but it definitely can. And this might be the one that, you know, that starts another way of momentum. So, you know, got rejected there. It looks like we're fading. Um, so it's not looking great. But, you know, as at least if you can hold 9.13, another daily level from, from back here, you can see he so found support. He broke the support level. He retested it in the, after he tested it and confirmed that the support is now resistant. He faded more. So if we can hold this level, you can see some continuation for tomorrow. HUSA, Jesus Christ, more. HUSA, another one we should keep on watch. Let's see how the daily is looking. Daily is looking nice. We broke through that. All the resistance level we break through are usually just to raise because they don't matter anymore. Again, this one, if we can break over 750 and hold, there's a little bit of a gap here. Therefore, therefore if a lot of people may be may not be big enough, but you're gonna see that we're gonna have some sort of reaction if we come if we come up to these levels. There's some clear resistance right there. But if we break, especially over eight. Man, this thing can really open up all the way to 988. So, you know, HUSA definitely going to keep it in watch for tomorrow. This this freaking thing. Man, RDVX, I'm so done with it. I was in love with RDVX the first week or two when it started moving. Now I'm just sick of it. I just don't want to see this stock to continue to show up and grind. I mean, if we don't have anything else to trade, I guess, fine. I, I, I want to con continue to like it. But um, at this point, it's just so overdone. I have 860. And again, these levels, 
don't think that I marked out these levels just because this is the high of the power of the after hour session. These are levels that I already have marked weeks and days ago before the stock even moves. This is a daily resistance right here, the wick and the high of this candle. It clearly almost stopped to the penny. This is the power of the of the daily chart. So let's see. The 200 is below, so we probably won't need to know where that is for tomorrow. If we can break over 950, there's room all the way to 11, and then from 11 all the way to 14. So again, nice daily chart, nice pullback, held the pullback in as it's scrolling. If you break if over 11, it's definitely looking good. So I'm going to keep it for tomorrow. YMM, nah. I guess it's holding up. It held this daily support, but nah. Siga, man, another one. Jesus Christ. Tomorrow is going to be kind of hectic if all of these stocks that I'm telling you here on the watch list hold up. Man, those bunch of monitors are going to come in handy. Okay, there's a lot of resistance overhead, but Siga has been holding up for so long that this thing is flagging. This thing is doing like a... What's that level doing there? Did we ever went all the way up there? Oh, we might have actually... I think we did somewhere in pre-market. Wow, wait. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. So we actually broke all-time highs pre-market, but the daily candles never went all the way up there. Wow. So this is, this is definitely going to be a level of resistance that not a lot of people are going to be aware of. So leave a like for... Or knowing that there's going to be resistance at 1750 if we ever get up to there. But the people that don't I only use the daily chart are going to be like, why the hell is resistance here? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of backholders holding here. So there's definitely going to be a lot of supply right here. So that's going to be a big level of resistance. So make sure to mark that out. I don't like that color. Well, whatever. That color will do. And then these are the true all-time highs according to the daily chart. So, you know, a little bit of ways to go. Um, but again, going to keep it for continuation as is clearly flagging right here. It's in a bit of a triangle. You know, and that's what, that's what, these, that's what these are. They're just triangles. Bull flags are triangles. And once we break out of it, we might see all-time highs on it. Okay, so Siga stays, Jan. Oh my God, Jan too. Jeez, man, tomorrow's gonna be hectic. I just did that so that it moves and I can delete it. Okay, let's see the daily on this. Because again, this thing is chopping around the 200, meaning that it very is very likely to hold it tomorrow. So let's see where where's the resistance on this. We broke through this resistance. We watched the high of the, which was the high of the of that candle. So I don't. So I can delete it now. And then it looks like if we break five, we're gonna have a little bit of a turbulence here at 529. But then from there. We're going to have this clear pivot right here. As you can see, tab one, two, three. We're going to have resistance at 586. But over that, all the, way, all the way to 701, we can open up, then 811. And then after that, I didn't even mark out any levels because I didn't thought it was going to go that high. But after that, after 822, there's a bunch of room. First, first to $10 and then all the way to 12 And then... And then to 12.97, and then all the way to 32. Imagine, imagine if we go all the way up there, man. Um. Okay, so Jan definitely stays. HLBS. Okay, this one's dead. Thank God. All right, so it looks like we have a bunch of names that are going to be possible continuation for tomorrow. And on top of that, if we get a strong looking, a strong, a strong looking um, leading gapper, we're going to have a bunch of stocks looking very good. 
which is good or good and bad because that means that our focus as traders is going to is going to be very dispersed that's probably going to mean that there's not a lot of volume so it can either go very bad you can either screw all the stocks up and botch all the trades on every stock up or you might be able to capitalize on on everything man this move here is freaking nuts when i was trading it here i got green on this move and then i gave it all back on this consolidation and what happened to me was this i bought the dip off of the 200 sma right here on this candle and i gave it room i gave it a chance i literally bought like around 396 and i held all the way to the low of this candle of 392 i had confidence on the on the um on the on the 200 sma but then as it continued hesitated i just sold it i sold it for like a two cent gain or a two cent loss and then it ripped all the way to higher day so then you know i jumped in again for the break of higher day we didn't get it and on top of that we flushed again to the 200 and then i bought it again because i was like Fool me once, you won't fool me twice. I'm going to buy you again, and now I'm really going to hold because this is going to happen again. I'm going to rip through hype day. Of course, it didn't. It flushed, and I got stopped out here. Then it started, it started creeping up. I think I lost again on this pullback. It was just bad, man, bad trading. Um, but I'm, another tip for tomorrow is going to be to try to survive as much as possible. Don't get killed. Don't get to max loss. Don't get emotional. Don't lose your mental capital on the choppiness in the first 30 minutes wait until something crazy like this happens and once something like this happens it's time to get aggressive um but yeah here's the watch list for tomorrow keep all of these in mind they're most likely going to be in play at least a few of them aerc auvi efoi jan husa rdbx and siga i guess this crap is also moving yeah i guess you could put yeah put that on your continuation play playlist playlist watch list and if husa moves too i guess you could buy and and not buy but keep an eye on indo because these do move in tandem but in any case that's gonna do it a little bit of a watch list there tomorrow man sleep well because tomorrow's gonna be crazy okay take it easy everybody until tomorrow remember always show up always fight with all your might because if you do one day you might just make it right take it easy everybody adios